F1 says it's not going to interfere to try to disrupt Red Bull's dominance in F1, but how long will it really stand idly by if Red Bull keeps winning every race? To help me get into that, we have Ben and Scott here with us. So what we're responding to here is Stefano Domenicali's recent comments that F1 believes and trusts the process, that it can wait for the convergence between the teams at the front of the grid, and it doesn't need to do anything to try to peg back Red Bull or give anyone else a leg up. That's admirable, Ben, from a from a sporting point, of course. We all support that. This is meant to be a pure sporting contest. What do you think now of Domenicali's comments, and do you believe him? Despite the public pronouncements, there will be some nervousness there that Red Bull are basically running away with Formula One at the moment. It's not a good look for the sport. The, the rules that we are in the second year of were designed to create a closer competition, and that's not happening. But for now, they can probably trust that there are some mechanisms within that structure to do the job naturally, particularly the aerodynamic testing restrictions. They're designed to compress the field to limit Red Bull's ability to streak away. And obviously there's additional penalties there for Red Bull through the cost gap breach of 2021. So they will hope for now that if Aston Martin, who are improving, Mercedes maybe can start to peg Red Bull back and maybe win a race or two before the end of the season. They will be able to say, OK, that's that's job done. We don't need to get involved in any more draconian way. It's definitely fair from that sporting perspective not to change things, certainly in season. Um, you, you can't just cut Red Bull's legs from underneath it just because they're doing the best job. The beauty of F1 and sports like this is that they're a meritocracy and you, and you don't interfere too much just to get the pecking order that, that you really want and is convenient for you. But what we've seen countless times in the past is changes between seasons when there is, uh, when it does reach a point of almost sort of maximum saturation for, for dominance and you can start to tinker. Let, let's not forget it, it wasn't consistent rules that facilitated the 2021 mega battle between Red Bull and Mercedes. It was a rule change that hurt Mercedes and, and pulled them back. All the little changes around the floor that, that, had a massive impact on whether you had uh, a high rake or, or, or a low rake car. So there's actually recent precedent for this, but it's not something that you could do in season. I, I would be really disappointed if F1 did something, let's say over the summer break to try and have the second half of this year be more exciting. But they could look to change things for next season. There's already, I think, a case building for change in terms of the drivers complaining about following being more difficult as the cars are adding downforce, the slipstream effect being reduced generally from the move to ground effect cars. And also F1 has in the, the back of its mind this idea to move towards a, a no DRS uh, Formula One in the future. So if you started to be more aggressive in moving towards those changes on DRS, that would remove one of Red Bull's most potent weapons from this season. And also they can just use a time-honoured thing of pegging the cars back, say that they're too fast, the tyres are oversaturated, let's cut the downforce levels. And that would obviously hurt Red Bull the most because they have the best car that's producing the most consistent downforce at the moment. I think one of the key things we've got to get across here, this is not a discussion about if Red Bull, if, it, if Red Bull are the bad guys for winning so much and if they, they must be pegged back for the, for the sake of F1. That's not what we're trying to judge here. Red Bull have done a brilliant job. And the reason we don't have competition at the front of the field is because it's the teams that should be its rivals, namely Mercedes and Ferrari, have done a bad job. So if anyone's the bad guys here, it's them. However, F1, this has come off the back of F1 experiencing arguably its biggest ever boom in popularity and mainstream attention. Certainly its biggest boom for a generation. So the point we're really discussing here is can they have, if, if, if the needle starts to move and we can see ratings are declining, uh, social media engagement is going down. If F1 can tell that the wind is blowing against it because Red Bull's winning too much, can we really have faith that F1 as a business is willing to let that happen in the name of sporting integrity? Because I think now the notion that F1 is purely a sport and isn't a business and isn't trying to be a form of entertainment. I think that's long gone. That's a myth now. Yeah, they've always been trying to make sure that either the racing is as good as possible or that fans are entertained. And usually they go hand in hand, don't they? If you get good racing, the people watching are going to be satisfied. But 
the the part of the problem certainly is that F1's audience has grown. There are new fans who have come in, and a lot of fans came in at a time when not just 2021 that that was the peak, but people that came in because of Drive to Survive in 18, 19, 20. Yes, that was still at the time where Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes were dominating, but those individual seasons, 2020 really excluded, had a lot of variety, race to race, that you you didn't know for certain who was going to be on pole and who was going to win, especially in the second half of those seasons. Um, and you also had lots of interesting storylines away from the track as well to, 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 to get, get people interested. But those fans that did come in from, let's say, 18 to 20 were then treated to 21. Those people that were then hooked during 2021 saw the greatest season in F1 history, arguably. That's what got them hooked. And the decline since then has been massive. And whether that's, you know, new fans, old fans, whatever, that that is a problem because F1's not living up to its end of the bargain, basically. I think it's a really unfortunate set of circumstances, though. I mean, fortunate in the sense that you had this perfect storm from 2020 through to 21. Drive to Survive, obviously massively boosting popularity. COVID, people with nothing to do. Formula One being one of the first major sports to come back after COVID or during COVID. And then this mega season that was probably the best title fight in a decade very rare you get those kind of things all coming together. And then, of course, a really controversial ending, which would have confused a lot of new people coming into Formula One. And then a brand new set of rules that's designed to make Formula One better, but two major teams dropping the ball massively, which allows one to just streak away. And that's not what you need when you've just built this huge boom in popularity. But at the same time, it's kind of normal for Formula One to have these cyclical moments and these periods of dominance and I just think we're seeing a rationalization of that it was never going to be sustainable to have what we had building through to the end of 2021 and then just beyond and yes I think it's fair to say the Red Bull dominance is hurting that popularity but it was always going to happen it's tough you know the hardcore fans are going to stick around you're going to hope that some of those softcore fans that have been attracted will stick around because they've just got hooked on the personalities and the Netflix approach Um, but the people who are only casually interested, you can't really make much out of them. You're not going to convince them to go to a race and spend their money. So I think people need to calm down a bit, maybe, and not worry too much about the the overall numbers. There is one other thing, though, just quickly, that's not just on the... I understand the point about, you know, more casual fans, recently invested fans, but established fans also that there is there's another element to factor in here which is however even if it is a vocal minority you have another problem which is some people think that what we're witnessing now is a direct result of Red Bull breaking the budget cap a couple of years ago so then there's a there is a a committed engaged part of the audience that are sat there thinking well hang on I've been watching F1 for years and now I'm watching it be really rubbish because someone's just cheated and got away with it. That That's how some people view it. So you have, that's another factor on top of a much bigger, deep-rooted issue where F1 kind of is fighting a fire in every direction from every individual fan base at the moment. And when you have a core product that is no more boring than F1 is capable of being, it's not particularly bad at the moment, it's just F1 being F1, it just means that you're just under attack from all angles. I think the key thing there is 2021 keeps coming up. 2021 was a, a freak season, an incredible season. I've been watching F1 for 35 years, roughly. I don't think I've ever seen a season like that. So that can't be the bar that F1 is is held against. But also, we've all sat through these, these periods of dominance before. We've seen teams have a complete walkover we've we've seen this situation where you go to the race already knowing that Michael Schumacher is going to win on Sunday F1 has has interfered before under under previous regimes under the Bernie Ecclestone regime he had two goes at, at, at dismantling the Ferrari dominance and at the second attempt in 2005 it worked this is this is part of F1 it's a sport in any sport you get dominant teams because they're doing a much better job than everybody else. However, off the back of what you've talked about there, the, the Netflix effect and what we had in, in 2021, I just have this nagging feeling that the more the Red Bull dominance goes on, you know, there's only been the, the, the winning streak 
with the exception of Brazil last year, goes all the way back to the, the middle of summer 2022. That's that's incredible and, and really is becoming unprecedented. I could see that perhaps F1 won't interfere on the technical side. They don't want to peg Red Bull back. But we do have this, this curveball now where we, we're getting experiments with the format. And I can see F1 turning to that maybe... Maybe for next year, I, d- I can't see that they could force one in this year, but I can see that discussion ramping up once the championships are won, once once Red Bull have their trophies in the cabinet. I can see F1 going, we're not going to take away your competitive advantage, but we are going to tweak the format to find ways to, to make you work harder for your success. Anyway, that's what we think. What's more important is what the fans think and what those of you watching this video think. So we've got a two-part question for you really. Firstly, do you think F1 should do anything about Red Bull's dominance? I think even we're in a position that in terms of should, probably not. But more importantly, the second question, do you think they will? Do you think F1 will hold its nerve and just allow Red Bull to walk over F1? Do you think they need to? Do you think the teams behind them are going to catch up naturally? Let us know what you think. Ultimately, as we said, F1 is about its fans and fan interest. So what you guys think is just as important as anything we could say or Stefano Domenicali.